everybody, it's Romania Black, and I'm really excited today because it's the rule of eight for Skip and Loafer. <laughs> if you don't know on my channel what the rule of eight is, anytime we have a season or a series of anime that is 11 to 13 episodes long, um, the eighth episode is always amazing. It's always a great episode. You can't go wrong with episode eight. Something happens. And usually that's because um, if you're looking at things in a three act structure, episode eight is that turning point into the final act of the season. So here we are. <laughs> and last episode, um, Mitsumi maybe set herself up on a date with Shima. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> She may have set herself up on a date with Shima and Igashira just happened to hear it. So is Igashira going to tell the others? How is this going to go? Is it actually going to be a date or is it just going to be the two of them walking around the zoo being friends? I'm fine with whatever. Just more character development between Shima and Mitsumi. I am fine with that, but I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait. So yeah, I, I'm really excited and looking forward to this episode. I've been holding off a little bit on it because I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to watch it until I'm in like the perfect mood. And I woke up this morning, got myself my coffee and I was like, no, today's the day. <laughs> so here we are. But I'm super excited. I can't wait to dive in. We're not going to wait any longer. We're going to go right into it. But y'all, I want to give a very quick shout out over to the philanthropy tier over on Patreon to thank them so much for everything that they've done for me on this channel. Um, obviously, I have three tiers on Patreon. You can just join for a dollar, join the Discord, be in the polls, get patreon exclusives that we do some things that are only on patreon such as movie reactions i just watched um i want to eat your pancreas it's only on patreon so you can see that for a dollar um and any other reactions over the month that i have haha uh -huh. um but also if you do the five dollar tier you get all these episodes a week early and then if you're in the philanthropy tier you get everything that i just mentioned plus you get a shout out in my videos so special thanks to those philanthropy tier members because y'all go above and beyond because you're kind and you want to shout out. So thank you so much to Alex Cornejo, to Animate Annie, to Be Happy, one of our moderators, to Dana, to Danger Zone, to Destiny Marie, to Eric, to Kiri, to Loisigi, aka Frogman, to Lyndon, to Nameless Monster, to Matthew Palfinier, to Murph Hugh, as well as Nicholas, as well as Trails, Translucent Men, Shimoyama, Sunspots, as well as Schlappalot and um, Matteo El Fidel. Thank you all so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. All of my love. So yeah, I, I'm really excited. I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're just gonna wait and see, right? So we're not gonna hold back, y'all. We are gonna get started with episode eight of Skip and Loafer. I can't believe we only have like four episodes left after this. It's crazy, but we're gonna do that here. In three, two, one, and let's see what this episode brings us. Whoo, that episode, like the ending of it punched the air out of me. I was like, oh, that's so uncomfortable. We're gonna we're gonna talk about this episode because this episode was really good. The rule of eight does not let down, and oh, Oh, so yeah, um, I guess we should start talking about now and start this episode off and just go through it in linear fashion. But I love now. <laughs> I love the aunt. I love now. She's amazing. She's great. I like that. I like that she clearly, you can tell she does on her eyebrows. Um, I like have no eyebrows. My eyebrows have never been touched. I have done nothing with them. Um, I don't think I could do anything with them if I tried. I have no skill in such things. Um, but I do know that a lot of people will shave their eyebrows and then draw them on in a certain way to get it exactly like they like. And now seems like one of those individuals. I love that they're a stylist. Makes total sense. They have like the, the fashion magazines and everything out. Also, I love that now is, now is in the most healthy fashion, the very hyper protective aunt over her niece. And I love that because I love it because she's like, it's not because she worries about Mitsumi doing anything wrong. <laughs> she knows Mitsumi is a, a baby lamb that is so pure, but she's worried about this guy taking advantage of her. And judging by, here's the problem. There's been a controversy with Shima, apparently, and uh, Rurika, which we'll talk about later. But if now realizes who that is and realizes who Shima is, um, 
or Shimuski, Shimuski, as she she calls him, like has given him a nickname of dread. Um, if she realizes who he is, she might act more rash towards him, being like, "Oh, I know who you are. You're some hot shot. Stay away from my niece." And I'm a little worried about that. So we'll see. But I like she's like, "Is this a date?" <laughs> I love that now is so protective of Mitsumi being like, okay, girl, you, you going on this date? Mm, like, who is this? What's going on? Like, didn't she say he was a popular city boy and she's worried about him, like breaking her niece's heart. So, and then she's like, maybe I should let her go out like that. She decides not to, she decides to let her dress a little. I thought the panda shirt and the shorts was cute. But apparently my sense of fashion is not good at all. I thought it was cute, but I love the little, the, the overalls and the, and the red and white striped shirt. It's very innocent. So mm. then we have Veruca, Veruca, who is, um, he's like, oh, she's a friend of mine and we grew up together, but I don't want anyone to know she's here. So it's very clear that Shima is trying to keep her as protected. Shima's trying to protect her as well to keep her um, away from public knowledge because she's a famous model and she's like very well known and she's a childhood friend. It seems like they both were acting maybe in the same show together. Cause in the flashback at the very end, when she's like talking about them holding hands, like they did when they were kids, um, he's in like the pajamas that he was wearing on set for the TV show. So it sounds like it, they've known each other from the same TV show and they grew up together. A lot of Shima's friends that are outside of this high school, with the exception of Mukai, cause they might've known each other sooner, all seem like they are actor friends that he knew from set and they've all kind of just kept together, which I'm, I'm assuming if you were a child actor, whether it's in the U S or Japan or wherever, you probably are close to those people because you kind of grew up with them. So especially if it was like a long running show. So it, it does kind of form like this little network that you keep up with. Right. And so, yeah, she, Igashira is kind of like, she gets to think like, Oh, when did Saijo Rika debut? Learn about her past and the scandal. Ah, okay. So we'll talk about this when we get to it. But yeah, so that's like the first thing that comes up is her being a model and the scandal. So we'll we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, it said, uh, embroiled in controversy, did she really drink underage? Want to learn about her surprising past? Like all the clickbait titles. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay. I like that Igashira kind of just ignores all of that and is like, oh, she was a child actress. Mm. Okay. And suspected of drinking alcohol in the sixth grade, snapped back at haters and got canceled. Which it seems like she's doing fine now. She gets gigs and she's modeling, but then even Igashira goes talk about trashy. And we suspect based on... Because it said, you know, caught up in it. But when we go to that flashback of her, she's not drinking. She's just sitting there very uncomfortable. Like she doesn't want to be there. And what it sounds like is that, and I don't know if Shima was drinking either. We don't actively see either of them drink, but they were in sixth grade. These kids, it sounds like they got invited by some celebrities to a party. They both went. Shima seems like the type of person that doesn't say no or didn't say no at the time. And then afterwards has become really selective based on what happened. But it seems like they went to the party. It doesn't seem like either of them drinked, but it seemed like it was spread around that they were. And then she tried to clap back and she got serious repercussions for it. And we'll talk about it a little bit more when we get to that storyline. But interesting. We'll talk about it a little bit more. But it, it does clearly show what's interesting is it's showing this double standard right off the bat because Igashira looks at Raruka and says, ew, trashy, but yet... And she doesn't know Shima's involved in the scandal, which we'll talk about. But she instantly thinks that Raruka has, like, this stain on her image because of it. When she doesn't even know if it's true or not. And then she goes around and she idolizes Shima. But she doesn't know Shima's involved in the controversy. So we'll talk about it later. Interesting. But yeah. She, but she thinks that outside of school, he's like, he's friends with all these glamorous people. So he must just be, you know after people that have clout, but no, she was just friends with Erika. He does not have a romantic bone in his body for her. He's being manipulated by her, which we're going to talk about, um, as a friend, we're going to talk about, um, when we get to that part of the story, but Shima does not chase clout. And it seems like Shima wants to have a normal life and he's trying to like find some sense of normalcy in this very complicated world around him. But 
And so Mitsumi, of course, is kind of like a breath of fresh air to him because she doesn't treat him any different. She treats him like a normal person and he kind of likes that. And I think he likes Mitsumi. I think that he's attracted to her. You know, you, you love who you love. But Igashira, she thinks that he's just chasing superstars. And the thing of it is, she realizes later, she's like, no, I'm the one chasing him just because he's hot. She's like, it's not because of anything about him. I think she kind of feels guilty because she likes Shima. But then she kind of realizes on the trip, she's like, I don't know anything about him. I'm just chasing him because he's good looking. Hmm. So there's that. But anyway, so we have them going to the zoo. She looks adorable. The little, and okay. The, the ways that I kind of tell that he kind of has a thing for Mitsumi is the first thing he does is notice the panda pin. Like, oh, you're noticing something about her and calling it out. That's like a classic, like what you should do on a date trick. But then he tries to use this cheesy humor and he's like, I've got panda sleeves too. And I'm like, oh, you're precious. I would have been like, that's so cheesy, but okay, it works. Good for you, Shima. But it's really cute. He's like, I brought something panda themed too. And she's like, Mitsumi's like, yep. <laughs> the funny thing is Igashira, I love Igashira does the classic anime thing where she thinks that because she's wearing glasses, that's her disguise. That happens every time. Oikawa in Haikyuu put on a pea coat and a pair of glasses and is like, nobody will suspect it's me. And it's like, oh my God. Um, Midorama in Kuroko's Basketball put on a pair of sunglasses and thought that was enough to disguise who he was. I love that that's the disguise. Glasses, good. Clark Kent it. Nobody will know you're Superman. And then now though, now has the advantage. Now can make themselves look male presenting and it works. So it's like, oh my God, I love the drawn. You can kind of see if you pause right when um, the close up of now and Igashira, you can see that now has drawn on the eyebrows in a certain way. You can see like the little hairs of the original eyebrows there. That's such an interesting touch. Like just, it's right there. But now with the hat on, love it, love it. He's like, are you Mitsumi's friends? I thought it was Mukai at first. I thought Mukai was following around. Um, because Mukai was like wanting to see what Shima was doing, but no, it makes sense that it's now. I'm like, now just, now is so fortunate. They look beautiful no matter what gender they are. <laughs> it's like, damn, G get you a person that can do both, right? And they're like, oh, you're scary hot. Uh, uh, yeah, scary hot. Yeah. I like that now it's like, oh my God, he's worse than I imagined. And then, I see here. And then that's when Igashira says, who are you and what has Mitsu told her friends about me? I'm like, I don't know if Mitsu's told now much about them. Then it says, I'm Mitsumi's uncle. You can check ID if you want. And then Igashira's like, I didn't know Mitsumi had an aunt and an uncle. What's interesting is I, I do kind of feel bad for now because now has to predicate that they are Mitsumi's uncle first, even though they are trans and even though they're a woman they have to be like oh i'm biologically her uncle like i hate that now has to take that extra step just to make sure it's not uncomfortable like i just i hate that societal thing where it has to be like yeah i'm mitsumi's uncle and i was born a man but i'm a woman so here i am like i, I hate that now has to go through that but they handle it so smoothly and with such grace that it's like it makes me i love now so much but yeah, so the pandas, like Mitsumi is just precious. I love that Mitsumi and it does get a little awkward at time between the two of them because they're both like, I think they're both like, we kind of like each other, but we don't want to say much about it. And I love that Shima's like, well, we'll come back to the zoo at some point. I'm like, yes, like come back when it's cooler and you two can hang out together. I love that. But I just love that they, they have this really cute little like moment together walking through. And I love her taking the picture of her as the owl and Shima thinks that's so funny. And he took it on his phone. So he'll have a picture of her as an owl, I guess. That's really cute. And then they walk together. I just love now in the background. Now it's like, damn it, this is going too well. They're really getting, they're hitting it off. I just, uh, now is hilarious. Also, she gets like the chocolate sundae and the parfait and it's really super cute. And he just gets the drink and it's kind of looking off. And I, I think Shima is kind of like, I think Shima's also impressed that Mitsumi doesn't ever put on airs. Like, like Igashira tries so hard to be skinny, to be fashionable, to be the it girl. And Mitsumi, 
you know, her end goal is not to be the it girl. Her end goal is to be in government. <laughs> so for Mitsumi, she's like, she's not trying to like impress anybody in high school except academically. So she's just herself. And I think that Igashir and others kind of envy her for that. And I just love that now it's like, this is going distressingly well. <laughs> He's a natural. And then I, I like that now says you know why do you think he came here with her is he trying to take advantage of her and igashira she's like no he's not like that and is he playing with mitsumi's heart and she's like no he wouldn't do that and now it's like oh you're in love with him and she's like no i wouldn't go that far i just want a hot boyfriend before you know i get out of high school and i i really like now and igashira together because now kind of points out that she was kind of like Igashira growing up in high school. I love that shot of now just like on the, on the water banks, like, and, and that's such a really cool comparison because now obviously from what it looks like in that flashback was presenting as male through high school, but clearly wasn't happy with themselves and their identity. And they were trying to be something that they aren't. And that kind of seems like Igashira is constantly trying to be something that they're not and putting on a facade just like now did. And now it's like, Hey, you need to figure out how to be you and don't try to impress all these people with this side of you that's not genuine because it's not going to pay off in the end. You're not going to be happy. It's not going to go, it's, it's going to negatively affect your interactions with others if you're being something that you're not. And so I love that now is like, if you want to stay, then stay because you don't get these opportunities very often and no one's going to judge you. And even if you do, I love now's advice. They're like, even if it's a little cringe, Use it to your advantage. I'm like, I watch RuPaul's Drag Race and on there, they're always like, you need to show some vulnerability. You can't just be perfect all the time. You have to show some vulnerability so people will like you. They'll like you if there's vulnerability. And so I love that now kind of gives Igashira that drag race advice being like, show some vulnerability. People will like you for it. Don't be, don't try to be perfect and polished all the time. It doesn't work. And nobody likes that. Everybody's got flaws. So you might as well show yours. I want Igashira and now to have more conversations because I think Igashira could learn a lot from now about being themselves and now being an older like role model for Igashira could be like yeah I was in high school and here's how it worked for me or didn't work for me so don't make the same mistakes I did be yourself and you will be happier much sooner than I was so I really like that so then they got the monorail and they're traveling around and that's when I love that now and Igashira are just both like we need to be an incognito and this kid beside them is like the heck and that's when Shima's like well we could always come back and I do love I relate to Mitsumi so much for so many reasons but her hair getting like like soaked in sweat and all like crumply everywhere my hair does that so much too so I I totally feel her but I love that Shima's like we could always come back I like that he realizes she's getting overheated and she probably needs to quit and not push it and she's like did I mess up today and he's like we'll just come again I love it. I hope they do. I hope we get to see them come again. That'd be great. And so Igashira, of course, thinks that she's the clout chaser. And now it's like, hey, you know, it's fine. I love that now reveals themselves being like, hey, let's go get some mango shaved ice cream. Let's go get that. You want to join me? I love it. And Igashira's like, like the star's like, oh, all that walking the calories won't even count. Yeah, see, they both, like, present themselves and have, like, the same, like, standards for their body and appearance. And Igor Shira's like, you're not her uncle but her aunt. And she's like, big sister. I, I feel like the big sister uh, watching Kroko's Basketball, there's a character in Kroko's Basketball called Mabuchi. And Mabuchi, um, in the series, presents as male. But all of the other players call them big sis. So I think that that's kind of the same thing here. That it's And I think the creator has even said that... Mabuchi is possibly trans. So I kind of like that, that this is kind of the same situation. So then we have them in the gift store, Mitsumi and Shima, and she's talking about getting all of the gifts for her friends. And she's like, my mom, my aunt gave me extra money. And her, Mitsumi and Shima are so different in that Mitsumi is so close to her family. She's like, oh yeah, me and my family are really close. I like to get them all these gifts. What about you? And Shima's like, my family is very complicated. And I'm like, mm. and the thing about it is, I don't think that his family is as complicated as he makes it sound. I mean, I think it's different than Mitsumi's and there might be some complexities, but I don't think it's as drastic as he makes it. But to him, it feels very complicated, especially when Mitsumi's talking about how simple her family seems. And she's like, do you have any siblings? And he's like, I have a little brother. 
Now, here's the thing. He says that his little brother is three, and he's, like, in his teens. So I think, based on the flashbacks that we see, and we're going to see it, I'm going to re-see it here in a second, I feel like maybe his family, his mom or his dad divorced and got back together and got remarried and had another kid. I feel like maybe that's the case. We'll see. Or they had another kid, like, later in life, and he feels kind of um, isolated from them. And she's like, aren't you getting anything for him? And he's like, oh, well, I don't know what he likes. And that, that was sign number one. He doesn't know what his little brother likes. And I like that Mitsumi, she just takes it all in stride. She's like, he's three. He ain't gonna care what you give him. Just give him a gift. He, th that's all that matters. He's a little kid. He won't care. He's gonna jump for joy no matter what you give him. And for Shima, I, Shima's not used to people being so bluntly honest and optimistic about stuff like that because he hangs around with Rurika, which we'll talk about. So he picks out the little penguin keychain, but then as he's walking out, you know, as he's walking out, she gives him the keychain of the panda and she's like, I got a twin pack. So you got, you can have this one. And he's like, aren't these for couples? <laughs> I like that Shima kind of realizes that they're for couples, but then he kind of realizes that Mitsumi doesn't realize that. And he's like, I'll keep it. Sure. This seems fair. Uh-huh. He's like, I guess I'll keep it and hold on to it. And as they walk by, he suddenly notices the fox doll and then he realizes as he's going to school and they say K-chan, so his brother's name is K. He's sitting there. Now he has like totally different hair than Shima, right? Clean up your toys. And then he says, sees the fox toy. And that's when Shima gets sad because he has the penguin toy and he sees the kid running towards the parents. And then he sees the, the mom, the woman and the little kid and them. So... Shima feels like his family went to the zoo without him and left him intentionally. Now, whether they left him intentionally or not, we don't know. We don't know. And here's the thing about it. If they went to the zoo, I mean, this isn't right. I'm not saying it's right or it justifies it, but Shima so often skips out on things and doesn't show interest in things. I'm wondering if maybe the parents took him to the zoo and just were like, oh, Shima's in high school. He's not going to want to come with us to the zoo while we have his little brother there. He's not going to want that. But, and I'm not saying that's right because they should have asked him if that was the case. Or maybe it's something where Shima didn't get to go to the zoo with his parents. And here's their parents taking him to the zoo. And he, he's like, well, why didn't you take me when I was a kid? Why'd you take him? And maybe they did and he doesn't remember. You know, I, I don't know what the reason is. But he instantly feels like he's being left out by his family and his little brother is being more loved by his family than that. And we don't get to see the dad's face. We don't see the dad's face. We just see the little brother. The little brother has the same color hair as the mom. The mom who has brown hair like Mitsumi. What do we do with that? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see if we ever see the parents' faces. But he feels like he's been left out from his family. And he feels like he's not connected with his family. And so thus, he kind of hesitates whether it's worth it giving something. And it's, it's kind of a petty gesture. It's kind of petty where he goes to Mitsumi and he's like, hey, how about you take this instead? I'm not going to give it to my brother. I'm pretty sure he's already been here. And that that's such a petty move. But when you're around someone like Ruruka all the time who is toxic and manipulative and would make you think stuff like that, I don't blame him for trying to give it away. But Mitsumi is not having it. She's like, who cares if he's been here before? He's three. He's not going to remember. He's going to remember that you gave him a gift. So who cares if he's already been here? Give it to him anyway. Be the better person. I, I like that Mitsumi's like, you know, I, and Mitsumi doesn't know what he's thinking. She doesn't know that he's thinking they've already been to the zoo. But she's like, if he's already been here, who cares? Go ahead and give it. He'll still appreciate that it's from you, whether he's been here already or not. And I just love that Mitsumi discourages that kind of toxic attitude. She's like, why does that matter? He'd be happy just because it's coming from you. And he's like, oh, you think? And she, it, it's just like, it feels like because of the people Shima has been around, with the exception, I think some of his friends are positive for him, but like Veruka is not positive for him. And I feel like he, it's good to see Shima have insecurities and kind of have this, like, he's not flawless like he appears. He has a lot of insecurities about himself. And I like that Mitsumi is, she's so good for him because she's like, you shouldn't feel that way. Like, like give him the gift. It's fine. She's like just such a ray of sunshine. Whereas Shima, I think, could be overclouded by this. And she's like, isn't that obvious? 
and she's just looking so sincerely at him like you know this is okay and she doesn't judge him she's just like it's fine you can give him that gift and that kind of he's like yeah you're right she's like next time let's come when it's cooler mm -hmm. she's like agreed so yeah, then we have the Sweet Tooth Cafe where we see Now and Them together and they both discover that they're friends on Pinsta, that they, they both share Pinsta together. It's great. And then we have the sleepover where she invites all of them. I love that I love that um Yuzuki and Kunami say like like welcome or ha happy to have us at the same time and then Igashira's like a, a beat behind, like happy to have you here. Like all this. Because now Igashira knows that she's met now before everybody else. So they decide to have it at their place. I think it's pretty, I mean, it's fine that now leaves Mitsumi, you know, to have the sleepover by themselves. Like, you guys have sleepover. It's fine. Um, I wonder if now's staying over with a friend is as innocent as it could be. Or if that was now being like, I'm going to see someone I'm in a relationship with. You hang out with your friends. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe they are hanging out with the friends, but I don't know. Most adults that I know if you go hang out and spend the night with a friend, it's not a sleepover. I could be wrong though. I could be wrong. Maybe it's like Shima and his friend. That's a child actor. Maybe they are just hanging out and having a sleepover. Maybe, maybe she was just using it as an excuse to get out of the house and let the girls do them things. I don't know. I'm just saying it could be that Mitsumi, um, didn't get the, the hint that now might be hanging out with somebody they have a relationship with. Maybe. I do love now's fashion. It's amazing. So yeah, uh, again, it is sad that, that now is like, I don't want them to panic when they see me and, uh, and think that I might be a man and just go ahead and tell them, but then say that I'm your aunt. And she's like, okay. The good thing is Mitsumi's friends are so progressive and accepting that it's fine. They don't care. They're like, they, they think that now is amazing as they are. And so I really love that. And of course, Igashira is like, oh my God, she knows me. I hope she doesn't say anything like us following Mitsumi around the zoo. <laughs> so, and I love Mitsumi. I love now is like, I'm so happy for you, Mitsumi. You've made friends. <laughs> I, I feel like everybody in Mitsumi's family kind of secretly worries for her <laughs> and her safety because she's a summer lamb. So they're doing this, um, they're doing homework with English and girl adverbs, I tell you. I always know, tell students, like, you know it's an adverb if it has L-Y, but some adverbs don't have L-Y, so what can you do? And I like that we get a little bit about uh, Yuzuki, and Yuzuki talking about how she didn't fit in in her middle school with her, her friends, being like, they just all were drama, and they weren't the type of friends. And what's really sad is that Igashira... Igashira have all these insecurities. Like, I, I appreciate the show is making it to where it's not something that's easily rectified. Like, Igashira doesn't have, like, one motivational talk and she's cured and instantly better. No, she still struggles a lot with what's going on with her. She's still struggling with her own insecurities and flaws and kind of overcoming them. But people like Mitsumi and Nao and Yuzuki and them are helping her. But Igashira kind of takes everything with a negative context where she's like, oh, maybe, you know, Yuzuki's friends were jealous of her and they kind of shunned her for that. Kind of doing what Igashira did at the start. And she's like, am I one of those people? If she finds out that I'm like her old friends, is she not going to want to hang out with me anymore? And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that was the case. I took it as, from Yuzuki's perspective, that the friend group she had just wasn't a friend group she got along with. And she was like, oh, these people are kind of you know, trash talking each other's relationship drama. She's like, stuff like that. She's like, I don't want to be a part of that. And so she had the opportunity to change her high schools and change her friend group. And she took it kind of like what Shima did. Shima changed his high school experience because he wanted something different. It's, you know, in Japan, they're lucky enough to have that. I, I, that's always something I kind of envy about Japan is especially compared to the American education system. Cause in America, unless you like move you kind of are you kind of your districting determines where you go to school at and where you start grade school and go through high school is typically at least in my area you go from kindergarten elementary school up to your senior year of high school with the same group of people and a lot of students you know some students 
it's a great experience because you bond with those people. You know them for like 12 years of your life. It's amazing. But for some people, if you don't get along with the people there and you're ostracized, you're kind of stuck and it sucks. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, oh, my high school experience wasn't great because I didn't fit in in that high school. And then they have to go to like college or out in the real world. And then they meet people that are similar to them. So I do kind of envy Japan where you can just switch high schools as long as you like get in with an entrance exam or something. So if you don't like where you're at, you can change and it's fine. Here, if you change school districts, it costs a lot of money and a lot of families can't afford to do that. So they just send their kid to the high school that's free and then they can afford to take them to. So that is really interesting. I also like that Yuzuki and Igashira can kind of bond over fashion talk. And then Mitsumi tries to like come in and be like, I know some buzzwords about fashion. <laughs> and Igashira and them are like, what? And she's like, oh, my aunt taught me those. I am like Mitsumi as well. I'm a warm base. I like green. I like cool colors a lot, but I think that oranges and reds, yellows don't look good on me. I'm too pale washes me out, but I do love reds and oranges. They look good on me, but, um, I do like purples and greens and blues. I like, my problem is I like blue colors. I like cool colors, but warm colors work better. So it's like, Meh. but yeah, I just, I think it's so cute how she explains it with the panda and the oranges and blueberries. It's neat. But yeah, so then, yeah, Yuzuki talks about her experience and how she wanted to just, you know, restart and Igashira girl having this having this existential crisis. Meanwhile, we have this cram school and Mukai and Shima are hanging out, getting their cram school on. And again, Shima dropping all these red flags about how things are, he doesn't have much to do at home. So he's trying to find things to do. His family doesn't have much to do with him. I wonder if his family doesn't have much to do with him because of, I wonder if it's one of those chicken and the egg situations. It's like, does his family not have much to do with him because of the scandal? Or did he get involved in the scandal because his family didn't have much to do with him? And that he just sought attention, maybe. We don't know. We don't know. I like that he has a friend like Mukai who's kind of like, who sticks by him, even though he's kind of like, son of a bitch, you're really popular and it sucks. Because these girls come up and they're like, our friend from school is going to the same high school you are. And he's like, mm. so yeah. Then now is like, hey, I'm heading out. Now it's like, I'm staying the night at a friend's place after the exhibition. You make yourselves curry. And that's when Igashira says she has to go because her family has an obligation. And, but now calls her out on it and says, you don't have a family dinner. You just, you don't want to hear Mitsu and them talk about Shimusuke. <laughs> Shimusuke. But here's the thing. One, I don't think Mitsu would talk about him because I don't think her friends know about the date. Igashira is the only one that knows. I, Mitsu doesn't seem like the type to boy talk. That just doesn't seem to be her gig, which is good for Igashira. But I liked that now is like she clearly puts a lot of work into herself. She puts a lot of work. She's a hard worker and she lacks confidence and fears getting hurt. And that's when now is like thinks back to like the wheat fields, the country town. And then we see now sitting there all by themselves on the beach. And, and here's the thing that's so sad, but you know, for now growing up in a rural area, I totally get it because I am not from a progressive area. My area, I, they don't, they are, there's a lot of homophobia and transphobia in the area that I live in and it's really awful. And I could totally understand someone. I mean, I'm my best friend in high school. Um, he was gay and he didn't come out till we got into high college and he moved away. Cause he was like, I knew if I said anything in high school, I'd be really ostracized and bullied. And he's like, I just didn't want to deal with it. So he just never said anything. And then, but we all knew in high school, like after he, when we got to college and he was like, he's like, yeah, I want to tell you all that I'm gay. And we were like, we knew since you were like in eighth grade, <laughs> when you stole my Titanic cassette soundtrack and didn't give it back, that was kind of stage one, but <laughs> he was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, none of us judged him. We we're just like, you could have told us and we would have still been friends and everything. He's like, yeah, you would have, but the community would not. And I was like, Ugh. so that's kind of the thing. I really get where now is coming from being like, it sucks lacking confidence to be yourself because you're afraid that you're going to get hurt by others, both emotionally and even possibly physically. And so I get that. And I feel like it's really good that now as someone that can talk to Igashira because Igashira needs somebody to talk to that kind of can relate to her. So I really hope that there's more 
conversations with now and her. I would love for now to talk to Igashira about her own high school experience and, and share that with her. Also, I love that they're on a first name basis. She's like, Mika and Igashira's like, what? And she's like, hey, if even the tiny parts of you wants to stay, then go up there, whether it's cringe or not, make yourself endearing. And I like that she ends up doing it. Yeah. So then um, Shima gets this text and I want to see what it said. It said, um, it says Shibuya, the usual place. Mm. So Chris, we have Chris that was the one friend. Yeah. Hmm. Like he, she called. Yep. The usual place in Shibuya. And he immediately has to leave. Like he doesn't even say bye. He just runs away. And poor Mukai is like, never mind. I'm going to eat at home. And she's like, I didn't invite my friends. And he said, we agreed to not meet up alone. I feel like she was, okay, so she was in the first episode where he hung out with the friends at the usual place. She was there. She was there with the one friend. That's what it was. They were all hanging out together. Chris and all of them. Okay. They were all hanging out there, but this time she's like, drop it. We're going to go. Okay. So we might as well talk about this as we go through it. Shima just does not look happy around her. Right. And here's my thing. What has happened to Raruka is really bad. And I do feel sorry for her because there is a double standard at work. There's a double standard where both her and Shima got invited to a bar when they were in sixth grade, it sounds like. Whether they drank alcohol or not, they were both peer pressured to go there. She's the one that got the backlash. He's the one that didn't. And there's a lot of factors there to consider that we, the audience, may not know about yet. We don't know what instigated it. She says she followed him there, and that's what happened. Now, there's a lot of things that are kind of... There's a lot of factors that make this a complicated story because, one, Shima didn't pursue child acting. He didn't pursue the entertainment industry. So he's not under a microscope, first of all, because of that. Because he's not pursuing a field of career that involves you being in the public eye, of course he's not being under the limelight. And it explains now why he's very adamant with Hanachika about, I don't want that brought up. I don't want to get that involved. I don't want people here at the high school knowing about the scandal. I don't want them knowing, especially Mitsumi. Leave it out. It's, it's done. It's in the past. Let it go. Right? He's like, I'm trying to move on. But the thing is, he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life because he's, he's had this whole career as a child but he's like, I don't really want to pursue it because what if it brings up the scandal? What if it does that? Uh, so he's kind of just floating in this limbo because of it. With her, she did pursue that career in entertainment. It, it is, there is kind of like a what if scenario. If she had stopped trying to be a model and had just, you know, moved on to a different career, would that have followed her? Would she have been under a microscope just as much if she hadn't? We don't know that. But so there's, so there's that complication, right? So we can't say that the double, we can't fully say that there's a double standard because their two trajectories have completely changed. They're not on the same path. So we can't say that. But you could also say that there is a double standard because she was put under the microscope. We see all these headlines about her. We don't necessarily see them about him. And so there is this kind of angle to it where because she's a woman, she is put under the limelight and been like, look at this hoe, look at this slut that was drinking with friends. And, you know, it caused Igashira to call her trashy. Whereas we don't mention it about Shima because it was just boys being boys, you know? So there is that angle you can go about it, which makes you kind of feel bad for Rurika and be like, oh man, that sucks for her. Her whole life is under this microscope. She's doing these photo shoots and stuff. But then you're like, well... We don't know exactly if it would have been the same or not for Shima because he didn't pursue that career. So there is that. So I feel for her. I feel for Ruka being targeted. I feel for her feeling like she's under a microscope. She's like, but here's the thing. Here's the problem. She should not be friends with Shima. End of story. What she's doing to him is toxic. It's manipulative. She's using guilt and manipulation to string him along and keep him around her because he's like, 
he's simultaneously the source of all of her anxieties, but she's also like, well, if I'm going down with the ship, I'm dragging you too. If I have to be under a microscope, I'm going to make you follow me, hold my hand, do whatever I want to, because you should be, you should feel sorry for me and you should do whatever I tell you to, because this is your fault. And that's not right. If she really cared about Shima, she should let him go. If she, because it's, it's, you're just stringing him along and making him feel horrible about something he clearly has tried to move past because you're having issues with it, but that's not fair to him. I mean, he was a kid too. We don't know the full story, but what she's doing is toxic. And what she should do is just, if he's that, you know, if you're so mad at him, just leave him. Like, get out of that friend circle and go do like Yuzuki was talking about and start new and have friends. But the problem is I don't, I think she's so insecure about herself that she's afraid that it, she can't, she's like, Oh, Shima and these other actor friends, this network of people are the only ones I feel comfortable around. I'm afraid that I can't make new friends. Nobody's going to appreciate me like these people do, but she's going about it in such a toxic way that it's dragging Shima down and negatively affecting his life. And that's not cool. Like he even calls out, he's like, you're kind of acting weird. And She's just like, does, and she doesn't like, she doesn't reciprocate. She doesn't try to be nice to him. She just, he like tries to ask how work was. And she's like, just, she's very blunt and doesn't ask him about his life. And he's like, oh, we should go home then since you have to be up so early. And that frame where she's on top of the stairs, the frame where she's on top of the stairs and she's like, oh, you've been trying to be a good boy. And he's like, yeah. And it's almost like she's getting onto him and yelling at him for trying to be a better person. Like she almost is like, oh, so you think you can just become a good boy now and just forget all of this? And he's like, well, what else am I supposed to do? She's wallowing in her past and wallowing in this controversy. And you can't quite blame her because she's bombarded by it in the media every day. And that sucks, but that doesn't give her the right to drag someone else down that's trying to better themselves and try to prevent them from bettering themselves. It's not right. I'm like, oh my God. And then when she talks about his friends, she's like, oh, that bob haired girl, she's your favorite, isn't she? And she was like, um, my favorite, she's a friend. She's a friend of mine. I don't know what you mean. And then her just laughing and being like, oh, you've taken a lot. You've always taken a liking to the circus acts. And I like that Shima goes, don't talk about my friend like that. Like, that's not cool. And that's when she gets, that's when she pulls on this manipulation She's just like, you're the one acting weird. I'm like, no, he's just trying to be a better person. She's like, now that four years have passed, you think it's okay? And I'm kind of like, it's been four years. She needs to move on. And that's hard. It's really hard. And I know, because like bad shit's happened in my life, but eventually you do have to move on. Or you're just going to drown. And drown the people with you. And it's like, I feel so badly for Shima. I'm like, Shima just needs to call it off with her. Shima needs to get the gumption and just be like, look, you're toxic. I can't be around you anymore. If you can't change or if you can't like rectify what all this is, then I don't want you in my life. And he just needs to let her go. He needs to cut the cord and be like, I need to move on away from you because this is not good. This is not good for either of us. It needs to, it gives me very, if you've ever watched Given, it gives me Akihiko and Ugetsu vibes, hardcore. And I like Ugetsu as a character, and I love Akihiko as a character. I like both of them as characters, but they are not good together. Like, as friends, as more than that, they're not good. They're just, it's a toxic situation, and they need to split up and separate and go live their lives elsewhere, away from each other, and that will let them grow and become better people. And that's exactly what needs to happen here. Shima just needs to be like, look, you need to get yourself together, but I can't be friends with you if you're like this, because this is not cool. Because, yeah, she's just using this controversy over his head. She's like, oh, since I've made a comeback, it's not okay. And she's like, my life's always under a microscope. And and she does look like like her sitting here. And she like just looks like she's in this very conservative outfit. She's not putting herself out there or anything. She just looks like she's very unhappy being there. And she's like, everything's going to be used against me. All because you I went out with you that night. And Shima, of course... Is just like, it's not like he's drinking, but he's just around these people, but he didn't end up the same way. 
it almost seems like she's mad because of that. And she's like, don't, so don't think you have any right to have a fun high school life of your own. And I'm like, but he does have that right. That's the problem. And I want Mitsumi to tell her off. I don't know how that's going to go, but I want Mitsumi because Mitsumi would be like, yeah, he has that right. That, that's not your choice whether he has that or not. And the sad thing is I think she guilts him into believing he doesn't have the right to have a happy life. And that's why he skips so much. And that's why he's so depressed. And I'm like, bitch, you need to stay away from him. Like I, Oh, I want Shima just to say like, look, you need to go to therapy. You need to get away. I can't do this. Uh, I want him to get away from her because she's toxic. She's not good for him. Mm -mm. And poor Shima. He just seems like, he seems like he accepts, he seems to accept it and says that he's sorry. I'm like, she's so manipulative. No. And then she's like, she's so demanding. She's like, walk me home. He's a natural golden retriever anyway. So she's, she's literally an abusive owner. She's literally an abusive owner that smacks Shima around mentally. And then after she smacks him, she's like, come on, I'm all you have. Let's go. I, I want Mitsumi to tell her off because I think Mitsumi wouldn't be afraid to. And I just want Shima to say, look, we're not going to be friends anymore. Because it's awful. And then when she says, hold my hand, he's like, oh, no. And she's like, not like that. So I am glad that she says, I'm glad that she doesn't want to be in a relationship with him. I'm glad she's like, no, I don't want to be in a relationship with you. But she wants that, she wants that affection that she knows Shima would give her because he's a nice person, right? I, I love that. She wants that affection that he would give her because he's a nice person. But at one point I want him to be like, no, he's like, look, we had, we were friends, but you've made this toxic and weird. Ugh! there had to be drama in this season. There just had to be drama and it's her. Ugh! and it's like Igashira. There's so much more to it. And it's not that she's the worst person, but she is toxic and she's not good for him. Meanwhile, we have the curry. And all of them hanging out and having a great time as friends. Them all like doing each other's makeup, having watching scary movies. Like they have this amazing experience together. And then we cut back to Shima, and he's just alone in his room. Mm. Mm. Oh, that contrast! It just like sucks the breath out of you right? Oh, oh my God. Ah. So yeah, Rurika, we thought Igashira was the drama. No, no. Igashira is not the drama. Rurika is the drama. Oh my God. I feel like Igashira, I don't know if Mitsumi would tell her off because Mitsumi is too nice. I feel like Mitsumi would be like, no, you don't have any choice over his life. I feel like Igashira or now would be the one to tell her off. I hope one of them do. I, I, it would be nice if, if Shima stood up for himself and told her off. I feel like somebody by the end of this needs to be like, Rurika, your past is awful. I'm sorry that's happened to you, but you can't drag others down emotionally along with you. That's not cool. <coughs> so yeah. What do we do? Ah! So yeah, this episode was really good. A, a fitting rule of eight, for sure. Um, but now I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm terrified going into this final season. I feel like Rurika is going to try to say something to make Mitsumi feel really sad, but I don't know if it's going to work or not, or if it's going to come down to Shima. Like I want Shima to tell Rurika that he deserves happiness and he deserves to have his own life and just shoo her away. But I don't know what's going to happen. So we'll see. <laughs> In the meantime, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Uh, please stay safe, take care, and we've only got four episodes left, so we'll see what happens on season one, episode nine of Skip and Loafer. I'll see y'all at the next reaction. Bye!